Welcome to Mindset, where we journey through the realms of mind and body to unlock the full potential of human wellness. Join your host, Alex Muir, as we explore transformative health hacks, debunk myths, and empower you with knowledge straight from the experts. Dive into each episode ready to flex your mind, body, and soul, because your ultimate well-being journey starts right here. And we're live, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Mindset Podcast. This is your host, Alex Muir, helping you flex your mind, body, and soul. In today's episode 118, we're going to be speaking with Simon Arnold. Simon Arnold is the former podcast host of the Odd ADHD podcast. And now, for his upcoming new podcast, this upcoming January 2025, he's already released 128 episodes this year in 2024. He's all prepped and ready to go for, for the new year, for 2025, for his new podcast, the top 1% talk podcast where he explores neurodiversity and business leaders, how they, how they develop, how do they get to the top of their game in their field of, of industry, um, how to generate wealth, uh, all amazing things. And just, just the, the, and also we're going to dive deep into aspects of neurodiversity and how that plays into great leadership in business and, so welcome, Simon Arnold, uh, to that Mindset Podcast. I know we did an episode and it was having tech issues, so I want to make up for that. So again, really sincerely apologize for that, but really um, appreciate having you on the show again. Welcome. Thanks very much, Alex, for having me. Thank you. It's an, it's an honor. And uh, let's, yeah, let's dive right in. And first of all, congratulations on your transition from, again, five years with your current podcast and then transitioning to a totally other realm surrounding um how the top one percent build their their visions and their their businesses and their inter respective industries but also their the habits of these people that are in the top one percent and like how they think what they do on a day-to-day -day basis analyzing their habits their pick getting into their mind and, and then how their neurodiversity works and how what you've learned in your podcast with autism and adhd how the world needs more neurodiversity. The world needs to understand people that uh, yeah. to understand that neurodiversity is here to stay. And many of us have it, but it's not, it's truly understanding it. And because you've, you've, um, you know, a, a large part of your, your, uh, the last five years, right. Where it was, was surrounding autism and ADHD. Tell us a little bit, but about how you feel that that's going to help you in your new, adventure of um, diving into the top 1% and how neurodiversity can build resiliency, build better leaders for the future of business. Yeah, thank you. I mean, I, I did the, the podcast four or five years, 177 episodes I actually launched in the end and cut it down to 128 just to keep it really specific. And um it was it was actually the 23rd of September that um, everything broke apart, really, like um, after the ADHD diagnosis in December 2019, then the autism in July 23. Um, I was offered a business, um, like a, a business project to do with a, a great lady in the US, actually. And she said, I think you're done with um, the ADHD and autism. And um, I think you should pivot and uh, and go into the business area. And Alex, I, I mean, we we recorded an episode, didn't we, a while back before September? Yeah. And um, everything changed. I mean, honestly, I I I'll tell you a little bit about the the triggering moment in a way in a second. Um, but um, yeah, one day I I decided to stop everything with the neurodiverse um, area of autism and ADHD. And within three hours after that, just three hours later, my whole life changed. And uh, and now um, due to naming issues, um, I called it the top 1% podcast, um, but due to graphical problems with the one and the percent and everything, running it by people, they didn't understand what it was all about. Um, so now I've just called it the business podcast and everyone gets it um, with the description. It's the same thing, 
Yeah. It's just a lot easier for people to understand now. That's awesome. That's awesome. Cause like when, yeah, like it is all about, um, like branding and like what, what's going to stick and what's going to, people are going to remember because if they remember and it's easy to uh, pronounce, it's easy to remember, then they're going to think of your pot, your podcast first. Right. And then yeah. how how your podcast is global, right? Like you want to be on a global stage talking to business leaders all across the world, U S UK, um, Australia, Canada, right? Like I can totally see that. And like, you know, going global and, and um, cause I feel like sometimes in North America, we're so fixated on Western philosophy, Western way of yeah. doing things. And I like, and that's what my podcast is all about. I want to have people from all over the world. I want to have people that speak different languages. I want you to know nothing about me. So we can literally meet in the middle and be like, Hey, I don't know you. You don't know me. There might even be a language barrier. Um, cause they don't know English as their first language, but I know yeah. that everyone has potential. Everyone has the ability to be great at what they do. It's a matter of putting the pieces of the puzzle together to figure out what that is for you. And that's what I love about podcasting. And that's what I love about um, content creation is like, you know, it's like creativity. It's uh, creativity um, from each and every one of us is helping uh, unravel, uncover the truest, most authentic parts of ourselves, right? And that's where ne uh, neurodiversity comes in too. Um, like how we all think and yeah. how we think, you know, thinking differently isn't a bad thing. It's actually a good thing because it creates more compassion and empathy and understanding and connection. And that's why podcasting is such a great medium because it, it, it especially on video too, right? On audio is one. I started on audio. You probably started on audio as well. Yeah. And then going to video, it's like a whole, whole other level of connection, right? Like you're in the Alps and I'm in Canada, and it's just, it's crazy that we can that we can have this talk. So. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to give you, you know, with the autism and and the ADHD, um, you know, I had I had some I I spoke with about business and about leadership in the in the second season actually of 12 seasons in total wow. so it started really early and about um about season six i decided to call it habits of excellence right and um so very early on i was really doing kind of like the business podcast without knowing about it and then just made the transition in september and i've never looked back since then to be honest wow yeah, I love it. I love it. Um, and that's something that I, that's something that I like, I know all of our listeners and everyone is after is like, really what it comes down to on a day to day basis is our habits, right? And sometimes we have years of conditioning of untraining that we have to do. Um, because we have, let's say we have a lot of good habits, but there's some really, really bad ones that are like kind of sinking us or like they're anchors. So from what you've observed from some of these top leaders in their industry and, and in their field of business, what are some things that they've said of how they untrain bad habits and rebuild really positive new habits? I just want to pivot a little bit on what you've said, um, coming firstly from the neurodiverse point of view as well with with regards to habits and people do get it when i explain it um so if the world the outer world is too too loud for us really um we're saturated our nervous system is saturated and it can't take much more in and what i've said to a lot of people is how we get by with you know being neurodivergent and then business leaders is the fact that once we have found medication or whatever helps us you know, dampen down this nervous system, you'll be surprised that actually not many habits actually exist because um, due to the outer environment, they haven't had the chance to form before. And um, with delayed executive functions, so that could be um, memory recall, for example, um, you know, it goes, we're, we're, it's kind of like we're fully developed or maybe not even fully developed in the memory recall area uh, at 25 to 30. And um, 
if there is no memory recall, um, it's then when you go into business as neurodivergence, you can basically hop on all the systems, which probably we'll get into a little bit later, um, that actually work and actually have no um, massive information that you need to relearn or unlearn because it's never been there in the first place because you've never had the memory recall. So that's um, that's putting in the neurodivergence and how streamlined we, we can become when we really hone in on a goal, if that's a, a good enough answer for you, really. No, I like it. Um, and that's honestly been my biggest challenge is like, like, and, and when you're neurodivergent, when you're someone that's neurodiverse, ADHD, aut autistic, um, the hardest thing is like, you want to do everything, but you need to focus on one thing. And I've, I've found that so hard for myself and it has caused a lot of issues and challenges. Um, like you said, like it's, our nervous system is already mega taxed because we're like when one person does something they do a task it's like okay i'm gonna do this task but when someone that's neurodiverse does a task it's like the anxiety the um overthinking the over anal anal uh, analysis paralysis um like you you want to do it to the best of your ability but but you're like looking at a thousand different scenarios on how to do it and that's sometimes can right like that's what's taxing our our nervous system and our mind and our, and our, and our memories, right? We want to do well, but we're over obsessing about doing, wanting to do well. And then we end up going in a thousand different directions to try and hit this goal or finish this task or project. And, and then we end up being exhausted and we're like, Oh my God, like I got to start this all over again and not tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. So. And I just, I just wanted to throw in, you know, there's seven different types of ADHD and um you know the autism is on the spectrum as well so you could be on anywhere on that too as a gauge um yeah just wanted to put that across so it's and but also we did i did talk to you about mo quite a lot actually yeah um so me and mo podcast you know all hd me and mo um with and people think it's still a bit frivolous at the moment really still in this day and age you know that most people have the inner voice coming in when they're eight years old you know as a kid and um you know it's kind of like in a way it could be your spiritual um connection or yeah. just yeah. kind of the connection with soul really i guess um and you know, through ADHD and a diagnosis. So if, if anyone's listening with, you know, the ADHD point of view, point of view and is sitting on the fence about getting a diagnosis, if you meet your inner voice, you actually have twice the amount of help that you had before, you know, um, in all different situations, when you're feeling good, when you're feeling down, when you're crying, when you're, you know, not sure what to do, that's your, it's your saving grace in a way. I just wanted to bring that up a little bit. No, totally. And, um, yeah, speaking of inner voice or like, uh, extension of self, um, yeah. I've noticed that become more and more prevalent, the more I meditate. And I think I remember our last conversation, you meditate, you meditate every single day. And what was your like kind of duration of meditation that you do? Do you, I think you said you did quite, quite a long session, like an hour or half an hour. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, trans, transcendental meditation yeah, yeah. Um, and and there's a book um called oh I'll have to see what it is um and they they just basically everything in your life is lowered like visits to the hospital visits to the doctor um you know if you do transcendental med meditation so I, I would wake up and and this is the really important part actually um I shift from the melanonin melanonin um state um to serotonin because that's what happens with the waking up phase and um, that's why you're a little bit groggy in the morning yeah because you know i don't drink alcohol or anything or or do that and you know but if you've got to bed on time and it's like seven eight hours and you feel groggy it's because the melatonin hasn't kind of shifted to the serotonin state and that's why I did the hour of meditation in the morning. 
and then I shift it around in the evening to go from serotonin to melatonin so I can get a good night's sleep. So that's really the basis of it. Yeah. And, um, I was doing research on that as well. And yeah, like to get to wake up in the morning. Yeah. It's like that serotonin. Right. But like, um, it's just the meditation first thing in the morning, it does help you really like ease into that serotonin. So you're not going like fight to flight, um, so quickly upon waking. And that's why, yeah, it's like such a good idea to like, even when you're just in bed, you're about to wake up or your alarm went off. I still like to like the, like yesterday I still sat in bed and then did a 20 minutes. Right. Like, and then I'm like, Oh, that's right. way. And then it's like frictionless. It's more seamless. And you're, then you just feel like, okay, I can, I'm ready to tackle the day. Yeah. And, and, you know, to start with, um, well, for the last five years I've been doing it and, um, I would write all the notes, all the notes down on paper, just to remember what's coming through. And for the last week or so, I just don't, I just feel it in the body. Like yeah. they say in the temple, right? In the yeah. body temple. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's a, a lot of things have changed recently, but um, you have this inner knowing of what to do and what feels good for you. And then your life gets ultimately better, really. Yeah, totally. It's like a newly developed and enhanced intuition around surrounding yourself, like well, what, knowing about yourself and, and like, what you want to tackle and what you want to focus on. It's like, wait, you feel like way yeah. more dial, dialed in. Yeah. And yeah, speaking yeah. of being like dialed in, um, yeah. What was one thing I want to mention? Yeah. So you talked about that, like kind of like how your, your, your friend or your colleague, they, that like, you should pivot into business because you've been kind of doing it all along, right? Like you've been studying these, these people that are neurodiverse and a lot of them are in business are the field of business and they're business leaders. Um, so like what sparked your interest in studying the top 1% and people and leaders in business and philanthropy? Cause you said you, you, you touched on it briefly, yeah. but was there another catalyst or you're like, I have to make this switch. Cause I remember when we were chatting. Just, yeah. Yeah. It was a huge explosion. I mean, it was the end of September and um, I'd met a lady just off. It's kind of like serendipity just came into my life, right? Out of the blue, no warning. Uh, we got them really, really well. And um, we did a, a small business project, first of all, and I could use my journalism skills because that's what I trained for to start with. And then um, she said, wow, you're doing really well on that. I've got a big project. It needs to be done within a month, but I think the two of us can do it within a week. And um, she changed over. She was she was in America. Um, she turned out. She actually changed her time, her awake and sleep time, to Germany. And um, we cracked out this business project within ninety hours um, for, in a week. So we were pulling fifteen hour days. I was using my journalism skills to the max um and i really just fell in love with the nostalgia of what it was like to be a journalist back in the day in the courts um at gatwick airport for example london um just on the outskirts of london as well and just taking some really heavy cases on and really loving that and with my you know neurotypical brain neurodiverse brain just um exceedingly fast at, at just chopping down words and making it into a story and everything else and that's where it came along um and she said you've got to go into business now because i found that the neurodiverse area really concentrates on the dis disability of um of the condition without actually looking at the upside of it and i've always been that way and now i can actually draw out from people in a really nice way um their strategies and, and the ways they operate in the business world no i love that and um i remember it might have been a ted talk it might have been a tedx talk um where i was like watching a youtube video and there's a there's a, a like a business leader someone again like yourself that specialized and understood I think he was like in like a psychologist or something like that, but he specialized in ADHD, helping kids, young adults, and then yeah, adolescents and and um, grown adults 
battle in in and um like with well, battling with ADHD autism and he says like ADHD you know, it, it can be a superpower it is a superpower in a way because of our ability to like we're, we're like witty like quick thinkers quick talk like quick fast talkers right it's just part of the of the uh yeah the the condition but he's like it it can absolutely and is a superpower because of people are needed with that particular neuro neurodiverse mindset they're needed in certain industries more so because of that ability and that that speed right of recall and speed of of getting things done like when we want to get something done we can get it done it's just a matter of um right the, the like the systems and the habits that we need to have in place for us to thrive right and it's, and, and he says it's like it's understanding and learning about that and he's like if people can be more understanding on what we need to thrive like we can be the become the biggest and we are like some of the people that have adhd and are, and are autistic they have uh, some of the they've they've become some of the greatest business leaders in the world and and athletes and like michael phelps like one of the most decorated olympians in the world like yeah. he's he had adhd he has adhd um he was on he was on the spectrum he's got adhd but he's was on the spectrum of, autist, of autistic too and he got like eight whatever it was like i can't remember how many medals it was a ton of, it was like 26 gold medals or something like that like in the beijing olympics it was insane um so yeah. like um it is a superpower I mean, with, with Michael Phelps, of course, you know, ADHD is need a team behind them as well. Yeah. And and with yeah. Michael Phelps, I know because I've listened to podcasts about him that every his day is split up into 15 minute sections. So yeah. he knows exactly what he's doing at every 15 minute interval. Um, when I spoke to Annie Bush, actually, a brain coach with ADHD, she said that um, and this is what I'm getting on to now with the business podcast slowly is uh um so so annie bush would say yes i need a team behind me to get all the paperwork done and everything done in her clinic um and i've passed through the going off on a tangent you know the, the first part of entre entrepreneurship in a way um and now it's developing systems um to use you know computer-based cloud-based AI um, and also getting people in as well um, is really the key aspect. Can I just say something as well, which I've really noticed? Um, there's a lot of people. Donatella Matthews wrote the best book I find on systems thinking. And um, throughout it, she says you can work a system, you can have a, a product with good distribution and everything else. But if your heart's not in it, it's kind of like the inner voice telling you whether this is a good idea or not and a lot of people are making a lot of money with their systems and then they ultimately collapse and they do this eat pray love thing and go off you know for around the world or go on a pilgrimage because they haven't found out their true self yeah but the thing is with adhd we do it the other way we find the inner voice yeah. and then we work out distribution product go yeah. for the systems and it works completely the other way around it is it is it's backwards um <laughs> like I, I keep, I keep having people say, oh man, like you're in the wrong vocation. Like you should be in personal training. Cause like I have way more of a, I'm like my whole background has been in sales because people in ADHD do, they do well because of our charisma and our energy. And so yeah. people are drawn to that, but in the inner core, that's not me. I don't see myself as a salesman. I see myself as a coach, a mentor, a, a leader um a guide a consultant yeah right that's way more yeah. me right i'll guide you i'll help you find who you really are on the inside and will help bring that to the surface because that will make you have the most fulfilling life i've been trying to find that myself and that's like you said like we're doing it in reverse like sometimes uh something that's always stuck with me that my dad's always said he's like you don't choose your career or business, they choose you. That's true. So, and that's what's happening is like, I'm kind of having a, uh, yeah, kind of a midlife crisis where it's like my, 
my truest self is coming to the surface of who I, who I've always wanted to be. Um, but I'm just, you know, it, it, it just takes a little, little finessing, right? Cause I got to do, I got to, I got to reeducate. I got to reskill. Um, I yeah. got to take the, the couple courses. Um, but I know I know like I have a very clear direction now, like it, cause it was kind of muddled when your direction is muddled. It's difficult, right? Cause you're like, Oh my gosh, like I know what I want to do, but what's, what's the best path to getting there. And it's, it's way more clear now cause it's really listening to the heart, right? What the heart wants and, and the intuition. Yeah, I, I just wanted to bring up on that as well. So our, our bodies work in seven year cycles. Um, it's a bit strange during the, the teenage years, but um, we spoke about meditation to start with. And it's between, I think, the ages of, of 45 and 52. And we've got chakras in our bodies as well. So um, basically, I just want to explain it really quickly. Yeah, yeah. We've got this um, supraspinous fluid within our within our spines. And um, when we do the meditation, it basically rises through the spine. And when we get to 52, um, basically the temple, it's up to the age of 52. So the temple is fully working and then it goes down back through the chakras again. So um, if you're between the ages of 45, 52, meditation is going to help you this is the best time of your life to do it. And it will open everything up for you really in life. <laughs> I, lo I love that. I love that. Yeah. Sometimes everything in life is about timing too. All right. So because yeah, I've only got five more minutes in this. Let's just, let's just close it out here. Well, and then um, again, how can our listeners uh, reconnect with you, Simon? Cause I know you've made the transition from the me and Mo podcast to the top 1% business podcast uh like where are you most active on for platforms and yeah how can our listeners like reach out to you get to know you so the all hd for autism adhd is on spotify and all channels and the business podcast is just on spotify actually i've really closed that down and it's lovely um but you can find me on linkedin linkedin is really my just one and only social media channel and that's just fine at the moment Awesome. Yeah. So we'll, I'll definitely uh, be turning this episode, right? It'll get us like a bunch of clips. I use a uh, wizard.ai and it usually creates 30 to 40, 30 second clips. So I'll be, I'll be uh, rec record. Yeah. Once this recording is done, um, I will uh, plug that in. And then I use riverside.fm to do like the full, the full episode. So that'll go on Spotify. That'll go on YouTube. Um, and then looking forward to sending you all the clips. Yeah. Take, it takes, it takes a few hours to like download them all individually, but, but at least I'll get like, yeah. I'll, I'll get you like five to seven so you can share on your LinkedIn and, uh, yeah, it'd be awesome to share Excellent. with your, with your listeners. Yeah. 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 Thanks. And then, and then Thanks let's, much, absolutely <laughs> pleasure to have you on. And then we'll, we'll schedule in, we'll, we'll do another episode as well to dive even deeper and, uh, yeah. share more with our listeners. Cool. Okay. Right on. Thanks awesome. so much. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for tuning into this episode of Mindset. If you liked what you heard, be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or YouTube. Your support helps us bring you more inspiring content and, ex and expert insights. Join our community on social media at mind.sep on Instagram, at mind-sep on YouTube, and visit our website, Alexander Muir, that's Amazon Mike, UIR.com forward slash blog for more exclusive resources and updates. Until next time, keep optimizing your mind and body and see you in the next episode.